the feature so many of our listeners wait for each day. Producers Picks. This is my favorite part of the show because I get to sit back, relax, and hand the microphone over to Jared Diglio. Jared, take it away. All righty. Well, we're going to start off with, uh, you remember, I it might have been a couple weeks ago or last month, uh, after the fact, Nancy Street Fighter Pelosi was talking about she was ready to throw hands with those rioters and insurrectionists when they came in because she's a scrapper. Yeah, everyone's having this like tough guy thing about January 6th. Remember the um the news story that told us that Ted Lieu, when the insurrectionists stormed the building, Ted Lieu grabbed a crowbar. I'm that... Mr. Crowbar. Yeah, the, 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 I can't remember what the publication was. It might have been Politico. I got to double check, though. I, th- I think you're right, but yeah, um, we don't want to spread fake news. No, we'll leave that to Politico. Uh, so he grabbed a crowbar, and then they had to fix it later because they meant to say pro bar, like the nutrition bar. Um, and then Nancy Pelosi said, oh, yeah, I would have been able to take them because she's a street fighter. It's like they're all romantic. I hate to say it like this, but they're romanticizing the what ifs, like, Oh, they, they, they had this near-death experience, and this is what I would have done. And, and it's all a way to make it seem like it, it was more of an imminent danger than it, it really was. And I'm not downplaying what happened. We've said it a million times. It's, it was a terrible thing that happened. But AOC did this, too. She made it seem like it was this huge ordeal for her, and it turns out she wasn't even in the building. Yeah. Well, we've got another uh, hypothetical. If that was me, I- I'm just saying, if that was me... They are lucky that was not me, because Uh if the circumstances were such as you have described them, but with me in them, that's a very different and scary outcome for those involved. If. This is called the if segment. This (laughs) is the if segment. Yes. Well, uh, West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin has joined the what if party. He revealed in a new interview that he wanted to stay and fight during the Capitol riot on January 6th before he was ushered away by law enforcement. You know, hold me back, hold me back, hold me back, shaman guy. Put him up, put him up. Why I oughta... Wait a second, Jared. I, I wish there was a way because it's radio. And for the YouTube people, if you don't watch on YouTube, it's a great way to watch. Um, But if you don't watch on YouTube, I need you guys to know that when I heard this Joe Manchin story, 90% of the time when I hear about Joe Manchin, I wish there was a way to convey how far back my eyes roll into my head. Joe Manchin talking about how he would have really, you know, thrown some bows makes me cringe. Yes, he told USA Today, my intention was to stay and fight. Let him in. Let's go at it. Oh, God. But I didn't know what was going on. You had a lot of people chanting. I didn't think anything of that. But within 10 or 15 minutes, a SWAT team comes in with all their gear and says, you guys are out of here. Just go now. Don't even stop. So, yeah, he wanted He wanted the PC rioters, insurrectionists. Come at me, bro. You want to fight? So, Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin was ready to bro fight. Joe is so lame. He's always there when you don't need him. And I guess that goes for the fighting, too. He's always there when you don't need him. All right. Well, we did uh, we did mention Dr. Fauci. We mentioned herd immunity and uh, vaccine. Governor Cuomo uh, made a a very just unaware killing grandma reference today about people who don't want to get the vaccine. But the New York Times bastion of democracy, which is not dying in darkness, put this out last week. Can you have alcohol after the covid vaccine? Moderate drinking is unlikely to impair the immune response to the COVID vaccine, but heavy drinking might. As if there was another reason people would be hesitant to get the vaccine. Oh, I don't know. You know, it's untested. Oh, if I have to get a booster shot, I don't know how effective it's going to be. I'm not in the risk group. You know, I don't. Oh, what? I can't have alcohol. Oh, no, I'm totally out. They just they. It's like the worst rollout optics wise of this thing. Do they want the mixed messaging? The mixed messaging is really something else. Yes, there is no evidence, according to the article, that having a drink or two can render any of the current COVID vaccines less effective. Some studies have even found that over the long term, small or moderate amounts of alcohol might actually benefit the immune system. That's what I said all throughout college by reducing inflammation. 
But heavy alcohol consumption, on the other hand, particularly over the long term, can suppress the immune system and potentially interfere with your vaccine response. Jared, you know what I just heard when you said that? There's no reason for us to be saying this, but we're going to put it out there anyway. We're going to say it just in case it freaks people out. There's not any science behind this, but why not? We're bored today. Can't let the fear slip away. People might start thinking. Exactly. Oh, the New York Jets. The poor Jets. They have been struggling mightily since, it seems, Joe Namath won that Super Bowl in 1969. I could care less if the Jets are struggling. Well, from one controversial quarterback to another, Zach Wilson, the second overall pick in last Thursday's NFL draft by the New York Jets, faces criticism for liking tweets supporting Donald Trump and (laughs) calling for unity. Is he the blonde one? Yes, he is the blonde one. Uh, I'll I'll be rooting for him now. If he is a Trump supporter, I'm on board. Go Jets. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, this is from... uh, at, at RZST programming, resist programming. Your last defender, vote for Donald Trump like your life depends on it. New York Jets draft pick Zach Wilson liked a pro Trump tweet saying America is gone forever if Trump loses 2020. Zach Wilson is MAGA. <gasps> he should put a MAGA hat in his locker. He absolutely it bo- it, should. It, 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 you know what? It did wonders for the last guy who did it. They followed, resist programming followed. Zach Wilson liked to tweet ranting about being sick of many things, including black versus white and gay versus straight, wishing people would just stop thrusting their beliefs on others. Otherwise, they are no better than the bigots and the racists. What? How dare you, sir? How dare you? He thinks people should mind their own business and try to get along? He absolutely does. It's just, it's, it's what kind of a... The New York Jets, what kind of a monstrosity did you draft? Well, you know what this also makes me think of? A a couple of um, weeks ago at at the Oscars, Tyler Perry gave that speech where he was like, you shouldn't hate black people or white people. You know, I I don't hate police officers. And it was like exalted as this amazing speech. And I'm not discrediting Tyler Perry. I know he's a philanthropist and I think he's probably a really nice person. And that's great. It's a great message. But it's like it's also just a pretty sane message. Like nowadays, just saying normal things like, oh, why can't we all get along? Racist! How dare you? Crazy land. All right. So there's a picture that's gone viral and taking over the Twitter sphere by storm. It was somebody who posted a picture of a Starbucks order. Oh, I saw this. And uh, it's a ridiculously complicated order. Now, we have Covfefe, so we don't bother with Starbucks anymore because we have fantastic coffee in the office. However, this customer, Edward, ordered a venti caramel crunch frappuccino. Okay, well, you know, it's like four names, but hey, it's Starbucks there. They got weird names for things. These were the add-ons and special instructions that they gave to the barista. Five banana, I'm assuming shot, like syrup shots. Oof. Extra caramel drizzle, extra whip, extra ice, Oof. extra cinnamon dolce top, seven pumps, of caramel crunch, one pump of honey blend. That should this should be illegal, right there. Five pumps of frappuccino, something. Seven additional frappuccino chip syrup, heavy cream, hold double on, blended. Hold on. hold on, we're worried about menthol cigarettes. This thing is gonna kill. This thing is more dangerous than anything I've ever heard. What? Yeah, I literally just walk up to the barista. Hey, put everything you got in this. This sounds like a recipe for diabetes. Yes, it is like drinking diabetes. It's absolutely insane. But that leads me to a question to you, Grace Curley. Do you have any strange order or any extra specific order at anywhere you go? No, I oftentimes will ask for no onions because, like I've said many times on the show, I do get pretty bad acid reflux and for me, onions are a trigger for that. Um, but I would say the thing I do the most that kind of makes Will or people I'm with go, oh, God, here she goes, is probably my drink order if I'm in the mood for tequila. I will say tequila on the rocks with grapefruit juice, um, a squirt of lime, 
also a lime inside of it, also salt on the rim. So it's kind of like my skinny version of margarita. But just when I explain it and I move my hands around so much, it kind of makes people think, oh, God, what is this, Mariah Carey? <laughs> just order a drink, damn it. All right, so that's your skinny margarita diva. Yeah, do you, going, okay. do you have one? No, not really. I, I don't do mayonnaise, sour cream, ranch dressing, or any of that stuff, so I always... I, I'm very vocal about that. I'm like, look, just don't put it on there. I also will say if people... <laughs> This is going to make me sound like a booze bag because all mine have to do with alcohol. But if I'm getting a Cosmo, I will say, um, please, no triple sec. I'd prefer Cointreau. But I, you know, I'm a woman with taste. What can I say? I wanted the dry vermouth, Reggie. (laughs) But you know what? When it comes to coffee, I usually just get um, iced coffee black. So I think that makes up for anything else because the baristas like me. There's nothing better. The only person they like more than me is Howie because Howie gets hot black coffee. So they don't even have to put the ice in the cup. But besides that, you're not getting more simple than my order. All right. When we get back, very special announcement, 844-500-4242. We'll be back on the other side. It's the start of a new week, and it's the Grace Curly Show. You're listening to the Grace Curly Show. 